Welcome, treasure hunters everywhere. It's time to grab your popcorn, dim the lights. Selling fair warning. So, And sit back to watch two superheroes of the antiques world go head to head in a battle to control the Earth, the universe, and a sale room in Sussex. Up first, is it a bat? Is it a spider? No, it's a fox. This hate crusader of collectibles has profit hunting superpowers and a steely determination to beat his arch rivals. It's the Dark Knight of Worcester, Phil the Fox Serral. There may be trouble. His nemesis is the Wonder Woman of the home counties. A fearless fashionista who sets her sights on victory and will do anything to win. It's Guildford's true heroine, Catherine the Great Higgins. Oh, my heart is going to... The supercharged buying machines are clashing at Bellman's Auctioneers near Billinghurst in West Sussex. Yes. They're each armed with £1,000 of their own money and are here to maximise profits for their chosen charities. So, superpowers at the ready, let's get this bidding battle underway. Phil Serrell and Catherine Higgins, it's time to put your money where your mouth is. Hi, how are you? Hello. Welcome to Sussex. This is your home patch, isn't it? It is my home ground. Yeah. I feel safe in this territory, sort of. So how much money have we got to spend? Well, this is the point. We've got £1,000 in theory. That's a problem for you, isn't it? It's a huge problem for me because it's an enormous amount of money, but actually it diminishes because we've got to take out the auction house costs, so yeah, the buyer's yeah, premium yeah. is 20%. So but but if I could just stop you just there. Yes. It's, a, it's about 800 It's about 800 Right. What have you got marked today? I'm not going to tell oh, you. Tell They're me, my secret me. things. I think there's, there are some fashionable scarves that have caught my eye. Well... I've seen some rather nice horse racing scarves as well. I'm just going to go and have another look at them. I think they're lovely. I wanted those. Yes, our Antiques Avengers are playing their cards close to their chests. They need to take advantage of the pre-sale viewing time now, as with over 300 lots on sale, they're going to need all their profit-hunting tactics to bag themselves the richest pickings. And Savvy Serral knows exactly how he's going to play it. I've got a tactic for auctions. Now, the thing is, an auctioneer's job is to try and sell you something for a bit more than you wanted to pay for it. Mark your price, stick to it, don't get carried away, and then everything should just be all right. Wise words from our foxy auctioneer, but what about the opposition? I've got a very interesting strategy because I know that there's something amazing in this auction that I'm really hoping other people haven't seen. So I can't go spending any money until that lot comes up, because I've got to save it for that. Will I do it? Oh, I don't know. Ooh, a risky strategy from our great gambler. You know what they say about putting all your eggs in one basket? Come on in, Catherine. Let us in on the showstopper. Look here, little secret. So rolled up here in the corner with the umbrellas is a vintage film poster of James Dean's great film, Rebel Without a Cause. What you've got here is an Italian film poster by one of the great Italian movie poster artists. And for 250, 350, which I think is the guideline estimate, it's a brilliant find. Mm, obviously, she wants to keep this lot her little secret, so she doesn't even unroll it for a closer look. Clever. Foxy is on the prowl too, leaving no pot, picture or piece of furniture unturned. Bit of a tip, if you're going to go and buy at auction, always think look for the mix lot, because you're going to get better value for money by and large. This is a little interesting lot of treen. Treen is turned wood, small little wooden objects. So, we've got a little pair of candlesticks, and here we've got a lovely little inkwell in the form of a coal scuttle, and that's for wiping your nib on. This is lignum vitae, this is a string box, so you'd undo this here. String would go in there, the end would come out of there, and normally you'd have a little cutter on it. Estimate 60 to 80 pounds. Is there a profit on those? Well, you tell us, Phil. And now Catherine has found something to whip her opponent into shape. There are two items in this lot, but the one I'm most interested in is this riding crop. Really nice horn or bone handle going down into a little silver cap and then this lovely piece of cane all the way down and into the leather whip. 
The reason I'm particularly interested in it is because it's got the maker's name on it, and that is Brig. They were the firm to go to if you wanted a cane. They were the masters of it. The other item is what we call a swagger stick. You would have held it under your arm as a military man. They were very popular at the turn of the century period. They're estimated at 60 to 80 pounds. So watch this space. I'm not sure where it's going to go, but I'm going to find some interesting home for it, if I get it, that is. So our vintage queen marks her catalogue. And with that, time's up for viewing. The sale is about to get underway, so our buccaneer bidders find themselves prime positions in the room. And with the poster not up for nearly 200 lots, our great lady can take things easy. Today I'm just going to make myself completely at home here, dragging the furniture around, finding myself a little seat. Got my tea. I can just relax. Well, don't they both look cosy? Meanwhile, the hammer begins to fall. It's 380 on the net now. It's 400 on the net now. But with bidding on the phones and internet... 500 on the net now. 500 pounds. Sold. It seems the prices are steep. Nice carved marble tablets. Just a lump of marble off a fireplace. Uh, and you know what's quite a popular lot, this? Here we go. Look at this. It's 520 on the net, selling 520. All done, 520. Gosh. That was five times the estimate. If everything goes like this, we are in serious trouble. It's like going to a football match and realising that you've left your boots at home. No point in getting changed, really. Oh, dear, the nerves are mounting. And now Foxy's ears break up at a pricey collection of animal bones. 190, and I'm out now. 190 on the left. That's £200 for a pile of old bones. Selling 190. Going home. Oh, where's he off to? Come on, Mr. Cyril, don't give up. If at this point in the proceedings that you realise that you've got to gird your loins and get on with it. That's more like it, Phil, and he's got a pair of lamp bases in his sights. I really love these edge glass lamps. They're Victorian. I'd love to try and buy them for around £100, £120. You know, and I think there'd be a... Not a massive profit, but there'd be a profit in there. But the thing is, just set yourself that limit. Don't go over it. 110 I have. 110 I have. 120, 130. 140, 150. 160, and I'm out now. I'll sell all down at 160. <laughs> Get in. Just broke the puddle. Steady on, old chap. And what happened to setting a limit? With fees, the lamp bases cost just over £198, substantially more than the £120 Phil wanted to pay. I've just bought the dearest lights in the world. OK, what did you buy? OK, I'm liking that. Do I buy a lamp? How much do well, you pay? Don't ask. <laughs> oh, dear. He's overspent already. Well, they may have cost Foxy a pretty penny, but at least he's off the starting blocks, which is more than can be said for some. Two pages to go until the poster comes up for sale. I'm just... My heart is going... If you could hear it, really. Do, 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 do. Mm, it's all or nothing for our poster girl, Catherine. And while she's a lady in waiting, Phil is lining up by number two. Lot 2096, Treen wears a pair of small Victorian candlesticks and a couple other bits there. This is that little bit of Treen that I looked at. £60, pounds. we made 60, who's got five? 65, 70 with me. 75, 80 with me. 85, 90 with me. 95 pounds. That little lot has just cost me around 120 pounds. And I reckon I've got a pair of candlesticks that are probably worth 20, inkwell that might be worth 50 or 60, and I've got a string barrel that might be worth 30. Never been a strong point in maths, really. Uh, yes. The collection costs just under £118, so Phil's going to need to sell his socks off to turn a profit. It's 2-0 to Phil, and the sale is flying by, with half the lots already sold. But now, it's finally the moment of truth for our great gambler. Two lots to go until the poster comes up. Getting quite excited, actually. But wait! Has the fox got a whiff of something in the air? 2127. I don't want to really see it before I bid on it. Where's he gone? Where's he gone? He's disappeared. I need to buy some things. So I've just I've seen in the catalogue there's a poster, Rebel Without a Cause, James Dean, who was a legend. I haven't even seen it. 
Oh, could Foxy be about to set our great lady asunder? Will he track down the hidden booster? Not sure what he's doing. Still viewing, the sale's going on. That indicates a note of worry. But at the last minute, Phil's distracted when he spots the lamp bases he bought earlier. Phew! I just bought these. They're 19th century, late Victorian, raised on this rude marble base. I'm hoping that that's the light that'll brighten my darkness. So with her opponent preoccupied, all eyes are on Catherine as the poster goes under that hammer. This is it. 2127, an Italian vintage okay. film poster, Rebel Without a Cause. Right. I've got two matching bids, and I'm taking the one on the book at £280, with me at 280 300 on the net now, takes it away. James Dean, there, there we are. 320 in the room. And she's in. Go on, my girl. 350. 380 in the room, 380. Someone else knows about it. Come on, girl, get in there, spend your money. I'm bidding it's the internet. 480, 500, 520 in the room. I don't know how I can go, actually. And she hold her nerve. 550's bid, 580 in the room. Gonna go 600? No. In the room at 580 pounds. One more, maybe? No. 580 then, fair warning at 580 pounds. Last chance, 580. Knock it down. She's done it. Yes. I cannot believe that. Plus commission, that's nearly £700. Catherine Higgins, don't believe it. I'm left with hardly any money to spend on anything else. That's a massive problem, but the gamble has paid off. Oh, my heart is going to... That was a colossal purchase at a whopping £719.20 with fees and nearly three quarters of her budget in one go. Come on then, let's take a closer look. This is the moment of truth. So I'm going to unroll it in front of your eyes. Oh my gosh. Look at this lithographic printing. It is beautifully done. Now this has actually been linen bat, which is a very expensive thing to do. It's exceptional, really. So this is a poster pasted up on a giant, giant billboard advertising the film. So Rebel Without a Cause, which came out in 1955. Oh, my gosh. Wow. This is, this is amazing. The graphics are so striking. This is a poster by Luigi Martinetti, one of Italy's greatest film poster makers. Gosh, you can't get better than this. The size, the fact it survived. So I paid £580, but that's money well spent because these posters can go into the, wait for it, thousands. The sad thing is, if I wasn't doing this contest, I'd be keeping it for myself. Well, she's a very happy buyer, and after that dramatic purchase, how are the figures looking? Our bounty hunters each arrived with £1,000 of their own money. Phil has managed to back himself two items so far and spent £316.20, leaving nearly 684 still to play with. She may have bought just one item so far, but Catherine's poster has wiped off a massive £719.20, leaving just under 281 for the rest of the sale. So a bold purchase from the great Miss Higgins, and Phil is keen to find out why. You told me I never spend any money. Oh, fire. You've had a go, haven't you? It's really nice. But listen, I'm in a terrible situation now. I have spent pretty much my entire budget, so I'll just have to buy everything that is, goes for very little. I've got a lot coming up, but I've worked out a new strategy. OK. I'm going to unplug the internet. Now, now, Phil, play fair. Catherine may have spent more than double her opponent, but with a total of three lots between them, they both need to get buying and fast. This is a new strategy because I have spent such a vast amount of money on the poster. I have £200 left. I've got some great things that I should be buying. I can't because I haven't got enough money left. And this auction isn't a great place to be if you need to watch the pennies. Our brave redhead needs to keep an eye out for the cheaper lots. 21.48, a pair of expanding table trivets. Estimate 40 to 60 pounds. This could be part of my strategy. 50 pounds I have. Oh, can't afford that. 21.49, a quantity of Victorian and early 20th century papier and mashing accessories. Yes. I've got 120 pounds. Oh, no. Down the front, 140. I can't buy it. That's, and it's a really nice lot as well. Things start really cheaply, and then they just spiral upwards and upwards. 
<sighs> with prices flying over estimate again and again, does she have any chance with the horsey lot she spotted earlier? Ah, oh, this is the riding crop. Now, this might be in my favour. Uh, I've got 60 pounds. 60. 570, no. 580, 85. Oh, watch out, Foxy's about. It's a bidding. I think the competition might be bidding on this. 85 pounds then. Fair warning, selling 85 pounds. He's bought my lot. That's cost me about 105 quid. I'm hoping that that crop might get me 60 or 70 pounds. And the stick might get me perhaps another 30 or 40 pounds. So, at £105, 40, Sneaky Cell whips the lot from under his rival's nose, and it's 3-1 to fill. Botherations. Is the great one on the ropes? Now, I'm just going to have to buy whatever it is, £50. We've got pages. I know, we've only got two pages to go. So this could not be a good situation. She's really played a risky strategy because she's put boatloads of her money into one poster. Now, Jimmy Dean is either going to do her proud or he might sink her. But Foxy should know better than to underestimate his rival. She hears a lot going under £50 and quickly throws her bidding card into the air. It's 35, 40. Commission's gone, it's 40 in the room at 40. It's 40 pounds in the centre of the room, then at 40 pounds. Oh, do knock it down to me, I need it. 40 pounds. I don't know what I've bought. Two, six, eight. OK, so I've bought a piece of surveying equipment. But that's my second item I've bought. So Catherine spends £49.60 on an ivory sector sight unseen. And she chances her arm at another blind bid when she hears a mixed log going up the hammer. £40. It's bid, thank you, at 40 Where's five? Any more at £45. 50 Yes. 50 gets it now. Seated left at 50 I've got no idea what I bought. At 50 Four, three, five. <sighs> I bought a brass coal bin and a fire screen. Mm. Well, they cost £62 with fees, and this time she wants a closer look. The first item is very highly polished brass, moulded almost and shaped as a, as a kind of harvesting hopper. We are firmly, I think, into the 20th century with this piece. What it was made for, I will do some research and find out. This is a rather attractive fire screen, and it's, this is, again, a rather lovely piece. Didn't intend to buy them, but watch me work away. Our gutsy lady is really taking risks now, and she makes it three in a row when she wins a collection of vintage car badges. £95 in the middle of the room. Catherine has got into the second-hand car market. The badges cost nearly £118 and leave Catherine just £51 left to play with. As this sale room steeplechase enters its final furlong, the pressure's on both our buyers to land their final lots. The next few items up are all horse racing scarves, and our fine filly is first out of the gates. Twenty-one ninety-nine, a silk derby scarf. Can take thirty then. Yeah. Thirty at the front. Here, thirty. Five. The back. Hard coming up on the inside. It's the Worcester Stallion. Thirty-five. He's buying my lot. And Cyril's over the first jump, but with another scarf on the horizon, Catherine's gaining ground. Silk coronation derby scarf. Commemorating the victory of Pinza. I'll have that. 35 on the left, then at 35. Disney I think I'm forward. okay with 35. Selling 35. Great. So it's one scarf here. Jazz Arthur a Brits end of the final stretch. There's another scarf up next, but with Catherine out of money, the fox makes a break for it. 35, selling 35. Well, I'm going to put two scarves together. That's what I'm going to do. And he's done it. So the results of our scarf buying derby are in. Catherine the Great backed herself one for just over £43 with fees, but Phil the Fox had a final sprint and won two scarves at a total cost of nearly £87. But is he odds on for profit? I really don't know. It seemed like a good idea at the time. But if you want to find out all there is to know about these, go and listen to Catherine, because let me tell you, She'll know. Well, over to our resident fashionista then. This scarf celebrates the victory of Pinza, the great horse that came first over the Queen's own horse and took the 1953 derby by storm. It's made of silk, and generally these pieces are quite hard to find. 
It's almost immaculate. It's quite magical, actually. It's very, um, yeah, it's very awe-inspiring. So Catherine ends her sale on a high, and that's the auction over. But as the bidders head home, our wily fox has snuck into the back office to make one final purchase. He spotted an unsold lot with a 60 to 90 pound estimate and backs a last minute discount. I've had a word with the auctioneer and I've been able to buy these two bits after the sale that remain unsold. This is a really lovely decanter. It's silver mounted, dated 1928. And this is a little silver cut glass sugar sifter, probably a little bit later than the decanter. What am I going to get for them? Well, I'd sort of kind of hope that I might get 60 or 70 pounds for that. And that's got to be worth 10 or 15 pounds of somebody's money all day long. And that's a final £55.80 with fees from Phil's pocket. A smart move from an auctioneer in the know. And that brings this fantastic bonanza to an end. But before they get a nose at each other's treasures, what were those final figures? Well, they both arrived in Sussex with a thousand pounds. Phil leaves with six items and spent £564.20. Catherine may have just five items, but she blew her budget on that poster and spent a total of £992. Two very different strategies from our dueling dealers, but they both had to fight tooth and nail for every lot. Oh. Oh. Well, you've had a day, haven't you? <sighs> Can I just see the seat of your pants? Yeah. You have had... I mean, I think your <laughs> post is fantastic, right? If I'd have seen that, I wouldn't have bought it, because I wouldn't have known what you know. Yeah, but you did buy other lovely things. Not many of them, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's so horrible to me. But you did buy... I love these. I love these. They are so now. They're so yeah, decorative. They're yeah. so of our time. Goodness me, I think you could do really well with those. What about the scarves? I'm either twice, oh. as, twice as well off or twice as worse off. I'm not sure which I love really. it that we've actually bought the same things. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, I wouldn't mind betting that you might do better out of your one <laughs> than I do out of mine too, though. So I say, may the best scarf win. Well, first past the post. Oh, come on. Come on. So our bidding buccaneers head home with their auction bounty. It's time to mop their brows, grit their teeth, and prepare for a selling spectacular. They've got to find the very best buyers for all their lots and use their charm and cheek to eke out every penny of profit. Down in Surrey, our great lady is still reeling from the sale. Well, goodness me, that auction was a shocker, really. For me, it hinged on acquiring this lot. Just looking at it, I mean, God, I've been photographing it all morning. Just looking at it is just a dream. I've already had a couple of phone calls to a number of vintage poster dealers who are really specialists in this kind of area, and it would definitely be one of their clients who would love to scoop this up. Destination for all my other items. So my 1953 Victory of Pinza scarf is a horse racing item, and I think that will go to someone in the horse racing world. The car badges, well, I'm thinking laterally here, and I think I'm, I quite fancy driving something fast with those. So roughly 90% of my budget went on the poster and 10% went on everything else. It's a kind of risky, risky strategy, but it's only one that Catherine the Great can take. Well, we don't doubt you for a minute. She also has to sell her ivory sector, fire screen and brass coal bin. Over near Worcester, Phil's putting in some elbow grease. Never let it be said that I'm not a modern man. And, you know, presentation is the key to selling all of these things. So if I can just perhaps clean the inside a little bit and get this all polished up, that's going to help when I come to sell it. These scarves, I am so far out of my comfort zone with those. These are my favourite piece. I absolutely love these. I was a bit concerned, well, not a bit, because this is, as you can see, just broken down here. Now, Worcestershire is the centre of the glass industry in this country, Stourbridge in particular, and I've been on the phone to the museum up at Stourbridge where they have a restorer, and he tells me, and I think this is just incredible, that basically they can cut this off here and they can either, if he's got an old one, put a new base on it, or he can make a new base for me, and it's going to cost around £50. That's going to put these in at just about £250. I still think they're cheap. I think they're lovely. I just hope the buyer does. He also has to sell his riding crop and collection of treen. Any 
money they make will go to their chosen charities, so our daring duo waste no time hitting the phones. They're lining up potential buyers across the country, but until they shake on it, no deal is ever sealed. Phil's first port of call is the glass restorer in Stourbridge with his Victorian lamp. The damaged part is removed under Foxy's nervous eye. I mean, if I did this, I'd probably break more than I'd menu. There's any kittens here. There we go, just like that. The bill for the new base actually comes to £40, so Phil needs to get his thinking cap on for a buyer. Meanwhile, his great opponent is revving up for her first potential profit. I brought my vintage car badges to Reading, and I've come to see Dominic, who's a bit of a petrol head. He owns this go-karting track, and I think he's really going to like them. Mm, she's certainly thinking outside the box, but can she turn a profit on the £117 purchase price? I have bought you something that connects with motoring history. I bought you four Fabulous. car badges, emblems that would have gone on the front of your motor car. The first is the AA badge, which I think is you know, rather striking and dated to the 1960s with the serial number there. The second is the Royal Automobile Club. And you've got the Royal Signals here and here from the Worshipful Company of Carmen. So the, the idea of transport, wagons, carriage, that is the badge that marks all of that. What's your first impression? I think they're lovely. I could see them maybe going on display in one of our venues or something like that. And do you know if these would have sat as a set on one car? They would have sat as a set. So it's interesting who would have owned these because there's a connection with the Royal Signals, there's a connection with a livery company in London, but they're okay. all individually quite sought after. Price-wise, as a group, I'm thinking the £250 mark, that sort of price, would be my opening gambit. How about this? I'll buy them anyway. Oh, good. For... Yes. 150. OK. And if you can beat me on the circuit, I'll pay 200 for them. It sounds a really good deal. The only worry is I've got to beat you. <laughs> Help! <laughs> well, you did say you fancied driving something fast, Catherine. Our racing redhead hits the track. Woo! Woo! Oh, no! I can't you but it's Dominic who takes the lead. the chequered flag. Yeah. Well done. I think you won. Thank you so very much. The deal is 150. 150 pounds. Yes, podium or not, that's still 32 pounds into a pot. So our speedy seller is up and running. Meanwhile, the fox has scampered over to Leicestershire with his lamp bases. After the restoration, his costs stand at over £238, and he's got a meeting with lighting specialist Tom. I thought these would just be right up your street. They're great. Nice big near pair. When I bought these at auction, yeah. this was in two pieces, the base. I mean, that's quality restoration. Now, I think that these were around 1880. And I think that they've been lampized probably, what, 1910, 1920, perhaps? I don't know, yeah, but anywhere by the looks of this from the 20s through to the 50s, it's difficult. So to probably know, really. into war then, really? Yeah. So you'd be interested in buying them? I would, yeah. What will you do with these, then, to sell them? First of all, we, we'll strip them completely down so they get cleaned inside and out and polished up. And then the wiring is the most important part. Everything has got to be renewed. Conform. Yeah, um, patent-tested. So all patent-tested, all that kind of thing. So now we come to the crucial bit. Yeah. You want to buy them off me? I would. Well, I'm thinking that they're worth between... Eight hundred and a thousand pounds, that's what I'm thinking. I'd be happier nearer the sort of five and a half, six hundred pounds really. Seven fifty, would that be any good, do you think? Well I can we do something at six hundred quid? Six fifty and they're yours. Go on. That is an enormous profit from superstar Serral. £411.60 on his very first sale. And he hits the ground running when he goes on to sell his collection of Treen to Herefordshire dealer Stephanie for £165, making him just over £47 profit. So, our Red Queen has a lot of catching up to do. Her next target is in Newmarket, where she's taking the silk racing scarf she bought for £43. 
Well, I've actually done quite a lot of research on my scarf and I've tracked it down to this actual racing stables where Pinza himself was trained. I've come to meet Graham Budd, who's a specialist sporting auctioneer, and I think he'll really love this piece of racing memorabilia. Smart thinking from our fine filly. We are at the heart of the Newmarket stables, really. We're here where Pinza, on my scarf, was trained. That's absolutely. I believe in that stable over in the corner there was where he was trained and won the derby in 1953. Did he really look like this? I'm, I'm going to show you the scarf now because you never know whether reproductions are accurate. The answer is, if I'm being honest, that is not a portrait of Pinza or the jockey. Okay. It was, it was a template that they used every year. You'd put the correct number on the saddle cloth yes, there. Yes, 23. 23. Yeah. And then, of course, you'd paint the owner's colours uh, on there. But, you know, it's not really an actual portrait, is the answer. And were these actually worn? I mean, were they, I mean this is an, in unfinished state, so it we've is. got rough yes. and ready edges here. They were all a bit of a rush job. The reason was that the derby was run on the first day of the meeting, on the Wednesday. And by the Thursday, these were actually being sold on the race course. Gosh, that's um, quick, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Price-wise, yeah. I was thinking of around about the £100 mark. Mm. I think we're close. Good. I think we're close. I was going to offer you £80 for it, yeah. £80? It's a deal. It's a deal. A racing deal a has racing been struck. Deal. Horse trading. <laughs> Horse trading, <laughs> yes, that's what we've done. <laughs> so Catherine nearly doubles her money, making £36.60 profit. But the celebrations are cut short as she stumbles at the next hurdle when she tries to sell her antique surveyor's equipment. Well, I've tried extremely hard with this sector. It's not been very easy to find a buyer. So what I have decided to do is sell it to a private collector, but he's only prepared to pay me £40. Technically, I haven't made a loss because it was £40 hammer price. Have I? Really? OK, a little bit of a loss, maybe, possibly. I never make a loss. I've made a loss! Oh dear, a loss of nearly £13, in fact. It's been a roller coaster ride, and there's no doubt who's in the lead. But let's see how the numbers stack up so far. Phil has sold just two of his six auction buys, but has banked a massive profit of £458.80. But Catherine is trailing way behind. She sold three of her five lots, but only made £55.90. The challenge is far from over, though. With plenty of big lots to sell, anything could happen. So, as Catherine plans her next move, Phil is already trotting off to his next potential sale. He's come to an equestrian centre in the Cotswolds to try and sell his riding crop and swagger stick to vintage side saddle enthusiast Lydia. You collect lots of vintage tack and stuff, don't you? I do, and that's one of the reasons I really like side saddle, because there's loads of vintage saddles and crops and canes, and it's, it's, there's a lot of rich history. 1920s was, was the heyday of sort of side saddle. Can we just check that data? 1922. Oh, was it fine magic? <laughs> Funny old world, isn't it? Yeah, bang on. So is that a crop? That's a hunting crop, and right. it would have been used in the hunting field. So open gates, that's what you use the bone on there. handle. Yeah. yeah, and you so hook on... Stag, isn't it? Stag yeah, horn. A stag horn, that's right. Yeah. And then uh, the, the shaft is sort of cane. I think yeah. it, is it bamboo? I think it might be a piece of bamboo. Yeah. That's by Brig. And they were a famous London maker, and they had a big shop in London. Well, that's the one part of it, because this came with it. It's a, like a little swagger stick. Yeah. But what's interesting is this here, look, because this is all marked silver. Might these be something that you might be interested definitely, in? Definitely, definitely. Have you got one like this? No, I haven't got one like this. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> They've cost me £105 or thereabouts. I was hoping to get 180 190 I mean, I'd take 180 How does that sound? I think that's OK. I think You're that's an angel. OK. Thanks, Lydia. Thank Absolute you. Angel, thank, thank you. you. Another £74.60 into Foxy's profit pot. He didn't even have to haggle. Lydia was really very fair with me. I just had one overwhelming fear that she'd asked me to get on that horse, side saddle or otherwise. That wouldn't have been for me. Probably, or the horse. Hmm, we'll take that as a nay, then. Our selling stallion is way out in front, but his rival has been playing the long game, and she's about to bring out the big guns. Well, I've come to London to sell my vintage poster to a specialist dealer, Simon Dwyer, and I think it will just be his cup of tea. The thing is, you see, you've got to spend a lot of money in order to accumulate a lot of money. That's my philosophy or it was when I bought it. At 
Having spent a massive £719 on the poster, the stakes have never been higher. I can feel the tension mounting as I get closer to his house. Deep breaths, Catherine. So, first reactions, is it as good as I said it was? It's really, really good. The thing about Italian posters is that the inks fade, the background paper goes brown, they print it on appalling quality newsprint, which was only designed to last a few weeks. So, actually, the colour is fabulous. They would have printed maybe a couple of thousand of these. Yeah. So, of those 2,000, probably no more than 50 were surviving at the end of the year. Of those 50, most have been recycled, repulped. Now, 10, 15 left. So they are incredibly rare. Wow, I didn't realise quite how few there were. The Italian film posters are actually worth more than the American film posters, which for the archetypal American film, you might find surprising. But this is, this is proper art. To be honest, these are so rare, people want these. In terms of what I would like to see for it, I'm going to start quite high because I know it's rare, I know it's special. I'd like to see something around about £2,000. I'd normally sort of pitch it around 1000 I don't know, would 1500 how does that sort of sit with you? 1300 1400 and we've got it. 1400 and we're there. 1400 we're there. Perfect. She's done it, and that's a £680 profit. It's a blockbuster result for Higgins the Haggler. I did it. I spent a lot in the first place, but I doubled my money, and what a result. As if there was any doubt. With that sale, she's back in the game and in the lead. Her opponent isn't slowing down, though. Phil is still on his equestrian run and has brought his silk scarves to a horse-themed pub in Worcestershire. Rebecca, I'm hoping to add to your equestrian thing, because I brought these to show you, look. They're sort of derby scarves, and each year there was a scarf produced to commemorate the derby winner. And with your jockey theme... Yes. ..here, I thought they might be ideal for you. What do you reckon? Yes. I was kind of hoping that I might get around 150 or 160 pounds for the two. That seems a little bit steep. Go on, then, make me an offer I can't refuse. 120 would be the last offer on them. 120. I'll tell you what, I'll take that. Thank OK, you much thank you. Thank you. Well, that's £33.20 profit on the pair. Phil finishes his quest when he sells his glass decanter and sugar sifter to a jeweller in Malvern. And that, David, will just sweeten the deal. Betting him a final £39.20 profit. So Foxy is over the finish line. Catherine the Great has one final lot to find a home for. She bought the fire screen and coal bin at auction for £62 and quickly makes back £40 when she sells the screen to a dealer in Hove. But the brass bin in the shape of a grape harvester's pod proves surprisingly popular when she advertises on an international dealer's website. Oh, that's the sound of America. In fact, a specialist who deals in grape harvesting bins in Savannah, Georgia, is interested in taking a closer look. George, is that you? How are you gathering? It's going to be interesting to show this to you over the internet, but I'm going to start from the top so you can see the, the almost repoussé decorations. Then, if you look down further down, it's actually got a nice rural interior scene. And then the back is actually plain, so it's flat-backed. And I think you yeah. can see that there. That would be most likely strapped to their back, and the grapes would be put in there to carry from the vineyards. It hasn't got any, any holders for straps, so I was wondering whether it was actually a functional piece or whether it's a decorative piece. Do you know about the age of that particular one? I thought it's around about the turn of the century. I think that perhaps just a little earlier because of the craftsmanship it is. there. It is a, a unique piece. You usually see the vineyards, more of a landscape-type yes. environment. This one shows inside it's environment. A do, it's a domestic scene, And isn't I like it? that about it. Yeah, And yeah. It, it sets it apart from a lot that I've seen. Price-wise, I was hoping for around about $700 plus, something like that. How does that feel? That is a massive opening gambit. You'll have to hold your breath and wait to see if George was feeling flush or whether the price tag scared him off. Before we reveal all, let's remind ourselves of what they spent at auction. 
Phil and Catherine both put £1,000 of their own money to Sussex. Phil won six lots and spent just over half his budget at £604.20. Catherine bought one item less but spent £995.30, including postage costs. But now it all comes down to who turned the most profit. All of the money that our brave duo made from today's challenge will go to charities of their choice. So, the wait is finally over. It's time to find out who is today's Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is champion. Hello. How are you now? I have got some trepidation here. I've referred to you to everybody as poster girl. You are my poster girl. I am your poster girl. Well, go on, tell me. How it, good was it? It was right, and it went to a great dealer who has recognised a good thing. Great, fantastic. Those vases I adored. Well, they were a fantastic story because I got the one restored. You would never, ever know it was broken. It's fantastic. But the thing is, the other thing, I mean, we bought the same lot, didn't we? We did, yes. That, yes, oh, our racing car. I had a car. tough time yes. with those cars. Did you? Yeah, like a real... And you? Uh, well, I had a great time. I went up to Newmarket. It was fantastic. And traced back to the stable. Pins was in. Mm. Yeah. The green goddess. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Just getting I better am by your poster girl, and I you think are. You without are, you are, you are. further ado. Go on then. One, two, three, go. Go. Oh! Actually, gosh, you've done a lot better than I thought oh, you thank would. You. <laughs> you are horrid. Yeah. What do you mean I've done well, better I than you thought? What do you mean? Actually. Yes, it's a resounding victory for Catherine. They don't call her the great one for nothing. So just how much did she sell the coal bin for? Can we shake a virtual hand with 650 US dollars? Oh, my gosh, we have a deal. So that's a massive profit of over £394 for the bin and screen. What a way to end her selling spree. Well, I'm just totally delighted. It was all about that poster, really. It was nerve-wracking buying it, but I held my own in the end, and it was worth it. I thought I'd done OK at the auction. Those glass lamps, they really did me proud. And I was pleased with them. But then Poster Girl comes along, rebel without a cause, fill without a clue. I got spanked. But the Wily Fox gets another chance to be...